Hello, everybody, and welcome to Purgatory Ironworks. I, of course, am your host, Trenton Ty, and today we're going to revisit a video that we did a little bit earlier. Now, in the former video, we made ourselves a traditional rivet header, and if you watch that video, uh, even for me, boy, was it a pain in the rear end. Uh, one of the things that I said is that, you know, even though you can do this the old way, it's not always the best way to do it, especially in a modern shop, if you have access to a few better tools. In fact, there's a couple of better ways to do this, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. So I'm actually going to show you that if I need a rivet header in the shop, and I need it quick, and I need it to work, I need it to be right, I'm going to show you the steps that I would go through as a professional to make this tool. Now again, this is super cool. It's super traditional. It's awesome. It's nice to have. It's, you know, that thing that you pull out just to kind of show off, like, <coughs> check out my traditional rivet header. It's wonderful and fantastic, but for a lot of you guys that are just getting started, this is not going to be in the ball game. However, if you've got access to a welder and maybe a saw, you can make this go a lot easier. So let me show you the stock that we're going to be using for this particular build. So guys, I've got a couple of mainstays uh, that are here in the shop. If you are not familiar, you guys have seen me use this several times before. This is one inch by half inch material. Uh, it is cut three inches long and I have a pair of them. This will actually be the main body of our rivet header have a couple pieces of one inch by quarter inch, the same length, three inches. These will be the actual catches at the top to keep it from sinking down into our vise. And I have a piece of 14 gauge sheet steel about the same size. So basically it will happen like this. The shim, our 14 gauge will fit in here like this. I will put this in a vise to make sure this is completely flat and really chucked up well. I will tack both ends of this with a welder so that I don't have to worry about any type of movement or shifting. This will go in the vise under the drill press and then brr, 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 this is going to be drilled. Now, a couple of tricks with this I'll show you in a minute. Once that's done, these two pieces will be welded flush just like this. Again, these will be the guys that catch the surface of the, the or the top of the vise. And then our piece of quarter inch by 12 inch material will be bent, bent in half and this will act as our spring and it will be welded to the edge over here like that. So again, pretty straightforward and it's accurate. When we talk about precision in the blacksmith shop, it's not what most people, or at least especially in the machinist world, think about as precision. Whereas blacksmiths are concerned with thousandths of an inch, we are not so much. However, alignment and things of this nature, especially when you're fitting pieces together, matters very much. And so when you're doing this type of piece, you have stock that is really, that is, you know, for all intents and purposes, perfect from our perspective. So if you don't have a vice that perfectly matches it, you're asking for problems. So this is one of those situations where precision, at least on a blacksmith's level, is very important. Hammering that piece into the metal like we did last time is haphazard. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be just right. You're not going to be able to get that type of precision at the home forge. So in this case, doing it by a drill press or some basic tools on that end is a much, much better option. It's going to fit better. It's going to work better. And you're going to understand, and you guys saw me, I was struggling with tongs and everything to hold this piece. I didn't have the right tools. And even myself as a professional was having a profound issue getting it right simply because I was fiddling with the wrong tools. Now, the trade-off is, again, do I take the time to make the right tool to do this job that I really just need to get done in 15 minutes? You're then running into one of the quintessential questions of being a professional. If you've got one piece to do and it's going to take you all day to make the jig, sometimes it's easier to make that 15-minute piece and spend the time screwing around with it, cussing at it, but that's always the trade-off. So you just got to think about that as you go through this work. There's a trade-off to everything. But if you do more than four pieces, it's time to make a jig regardless. But one, it's debatable. Let's get to work. I did a little bit of modifying to my shim. My shim was just a little bit too big. I want to make sure that it did not extend past the ends of everything. I needed it to fit in, so we've got that. And also, I came in and actually notched this out here on the top. And the reason for that is when I start drilling, 
and I put these pieces together, I want to make sure that I'm not hitting that middle piece, that I'm, I'm actually straddling the two pieces of that side metal there, and we're good to go. So I'll just line this up, and again, this can be done in a vise, or I'm just going to take a clamp here, put a good bit of pressure on here. If there's any, again, this isn't precision, but you want to put a good bit of pressure on there just to line everything up, and then I'm going to come in with my welder, make sure everything's nice and flat. This is the scientific way to make sure it's flat. I'm going to come in, I'm going to drop tack wells on each side. This just makes sure that it's not going anywhere as I'm drilling it. So, get my magical metal wand here, and... Good tack on that side. Now remember, you got to cut this loose later, so, uh, you know, be relatively gentle. Okay. Everything's tacked in. Uh, I will cool this bad boy off. <laughs> so big, won't fit into quits barrel. Okay, here we go. And now we're ready to go to the drill press. So guys, I got everything locked in. Um, one thing you can't really see well right here is the fact that I've actually went ahead and put this on the grinder on the top to get these pieces exactly level. So now, before any of you start flipping out, Yes, I have the speed turned up on the drill simply because this is going to be a little erratic. So I find it a lot easier to get this guy to sit down uh, with a little bit higher speed uh, than the normal slow roll. So we're going to come into here. Give myself a little bit of relief right there. Okay, here we go. That's the one part you kind of have to fight just a little bit. But once she's set, now she's going to chatter because there's a gap in between there, but once it contacts the 14 gauge, you can see it quiets down pretty easily. Don't overheat your bit. Always keep it lubricated. It will take you a little bit of time. This is a lot of metal. You're going through an inch of material. And it looks like I've broken all the way through. I'm going to give it just a little bit more just for kicks. Mm. More off there. And guys, when you're, if you're new to this whole drilling and milling thing, this stuff right here, the little filings are known as swarf. Uh, don't brush that with your hand. Those are a bunch of little razors and they will get you. But you can see, now we have a hole that's pretty well centered uh, and is looking good. So now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna take this to the grinder, I'm gonna knock off these tack welds. Uno momento, I am wrong. What we're gonna do first is I'm going to bend my quarter inch piece weld it in place while it's here and then the last thing that i'm going to do is actually grind off our welds and release this piece you can see our piece has got a hole and that's the bottom side right there and you can see it's pretty darn even so it's looking good i have my piece bent right here uh, again this is not even bent hot this is bent cold so i've just got it tightened in we're going to weld this. Don't weld it to the center. If you weld it to the center, then when you put this in your vise, you're going to hit your, your screw that's in the middle. So what you want to do is you want to put it over to, the, to one side or the other and tack this bad boy in. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's go tacky tacky. And guys, I would tell you, take note, this ain't exactly precision welding. We are gluing some crap together. That's all we're doing. Okay, she's looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to break these wells loose, and uh, we're going to give her a try. 
Now, even when you uh, work the welds off, uh, you're still probably going to need to take a cold chisel to go in and get everything out. Especially that little piece of sheet metal there, it will usually be stuck. So, but a cold chisel and a couple of pops will bring it right out. And this is also kind of a bit of a pressure test because if you didn't do your welds right, then this thing's going to come loose. But I think I got, I th think I got most of this done right. Come on, you joker. Oh. Now, if you can see, what happened is it, my, uh, my fantastic welding right there actually uh, got a little bit of the sheet metal, so it stuck there. So, again, not exactly the highest precision welding I've ever done. But that's okay. It's amazing how much the chisel can do. And voila. So there's our piece. Uh, should be no problem. I mean, like I said, as long as you got a little bit of spring there, you're good. But if you've got any rag left over uh, in there from a weld, make sure and grind that out. You don't want anything to interfere with it actually coming together. But that should be enough gap uh, that should bite on a piece of quarter inch very effectively. So let me clean this up and then we're going to give this a try. Now one last thing before we actually use this. You know, I haven't added the wings to this. If you get to this point, because it's a quarter of an inch, this can be used as is. Uh, it's just not going to be great. You really need something to catch the edge of the vise. Um, and uh, so you can add this and you can be guaranteed uh, that it will never sink down. It just makes for a nicer product, but it may be more welding than you're used to. But these wings do help. Uh, if you don't have extra pieces of metal, you can just come in and drop weld on the outside here. You just need something to be able to catch the top lip of that vise. The problem is if you're just dropping weld on there, a lot of your older vices, that it doesn't have a clean, nice, straight edge. So it just doesn't do a great job. Having something else welded on there is really where you want to be. And so for intents and purposes, I'm going to go ahead and weld these guys on just so you can see what it's supposed to look like. But you can sometimes get away uh, with just having this. But when you start going over anything that's quarter of an inch, it requires a lot more pounding force, uh, you're going to be in trouble because it's just going to slide right down the vise. So quarter inch, you can get away with it. Anything heavier, you've got to have some wings on it. And here we go, guys. You can see that I've welded my wings on and uh, she's looking good. Make sure and clean up your top plate. Don't let there be any rag or nastiness up here because that will affect your rivet. But again, notice I have set the spring to the side. So that means I can put this relatively center and the spring doesn't interfere and come down and hit the screw and that's what you want. So here's a piece of quarter inch. And buddy, let me tell you what, that joker is in there. This is about as close to a precision tool as blacksmiths are going to get. I've got about a little, little over a sixteenth of an inch gap, so I've got plenty of place to torque this guy down. It is not going anywhere. This is not going to slide. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of the proper way uh, that we do a rivet here in the shop is I'm going to cut this and then I'm actually going to use the oxyacetylene torch to hit the top of it. Now, in the other video, when I had the heated rivet from the forge, you know, it actually moved while it was in the vise. It was actually going down because the fit wasn't good. When I heat this one, if you'll notice, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's not going to budge. So I'm going to lock this down. And we're just going to go kind of wild west raw on this bad boy. We're just going to hit it with the bolt cutters. I'm going to leave a good bit on top. This is a little much for doing a standard rivet, but that'll work. Let's get ourselves a little bit of fire in the form of the oxyacetylene torch. And this is a video I'll do a little bit later, but uh, if you're doing rivets or anything of that like, uh, there's probably no better way to do rivets than using an oxyacetylene torch. This is how I texture every lag bolt with a square head.
And boys and girls, that is about as pretty as it gets when it comes to a rivet. Now, of course, I could have made this a square head. But look how pretty nice, neat, and even that head is right there. Tell you what, let's, uh, let's take a close-up. Now, as you guys can see, that bad boy didn't move in the vise. Uh, because it did not move, I was, very, uh, I was very much able to accurately control where my hammer blows were following. And because I was using the oxyacetylene torch, I could add several different heats and make a really pretty button head on that guy. So there we have it, guys. Two different tools, basically from two different eras. So here's the thing, and I, I run into this a lot. I hear a lot of beginners say, I want to do it the old way. Well, you're going to suck at it. And when you finish your tool, if you make a tool that functions, it's still kind of going to suck. If you have access, and I've, you absolutely do, you can go down to your local fab shop. If you know how to set this tool up, it's going to be better. It's going to be easier, and it's going to allow you to get to working. You don't want to spend all your time trying to make a rivet header. You want to spend your time using rivets to put good work together. That's the goal. So for somebody like me, it, it, here's the thing. I made this tool the other day for our video. This will go on the wall, okay, because it's an interesting tool. It's cool. We did it the old way. took a hell of a lot longer than it, it took to make this. But this is not the right tool for the job in a professional shop. This is because it's a precision tool. And with this one, I can even come back in and add probably three more spaces to this. So I'll have not only quarter inch, I'll have three eighths and half inch all in the same tool. I can't do that with this one. There are situations where the modern version of the tool far, far, far outpaces the old version of the tool. And if you are just hell bent on doing it the old way, you're kind of wasting your time. Now, if you're just exercising, you're playing and you're having fun, no problem at all. But if your goal is to make a tool that you can then start using in the shop to great effect, this is the way that you got to go. And that's always the balance and that's always the trade-off. So many people that get into the craft say, well, I want to do it the old way. You are not skilled enough to do it the old way. The reason that the old way is the old way is because all the smart folks figured out a new way. Now, if you're doing reenactments and you want to be as authentic as possible, that's fine. But understand, that's on the other end of your education, not where you're at now. Get tooling that works well to start with. Learn how to use it. Spend your time making cool things with rivets instead of spending a week trying to make the tool to make the rivet. It's going to help you move along in your education a lot faster than trying to pluck out the fingernails of every tool that gets in your way just because you want to do it the old way. So that's the story. Guys, again, we are on the upswing with the channel Please, 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 if you enjoyed the video, if you got something out of it, leave a comment. The algorithm likes that, and, and we all have to do what the algorithm says if we want to be famous YouTube stars. So, guys, you guys be safe out there. If you have questions, you know where to leave them. Outside of that, you guys be safe, be good, and go forth and sin no more. See you guys.